Hey everybody, Jeanette Womble back again. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm gonna to be covering the four things that you can do to get the best return on your investment when it comes to selling your home. So stay with me, get your legal pad out, and let's get started. Tip number one, understand the size of your home. And when I say size, it's not one of those, well, I think my house is 2,000 square feet. You definitely want to have a diagram or have your home measured before you put it on the market. Most people do have copies of appraisals from when they purchased. And if you go down deep into your appraisal, you'll see there's a square footage diagram in there. And the reason why this is so important is because buyers and appraisers rely heavily on the represented square footage to make offers and to also support the value. In our market here in Columbia, we have a median price of about $250,000. So we're seeing a lot of values coming in around 140 a square foot. So a difference of 50 square feet can mean a difference of value of over $7,000. And you definitely don't wanna find out the week before closing that your house wasn't the size that you thought it was and then you're experiencing a large shortfall in value and in your net proceeds. So be sure to have your house measured or find a measurement in your file before you put your house on the market so you have correct value and a correct basis for value. Tip number two, go and get a bunch of cardboard boxes or Rubbermaid containers and declutter. People are making stronger offers and paying more for homes that they can feel they can move into and that are not overwhelmed with too much stuff. So your decor and all of your personal things that you love are great for you. However, when buyers walk into homes that have an excess of these things, they can feel very overwhelmed and they might feel like this home is not going to fit all of their furniture or all of their things. So you do wanna take a few weeks and just start packing up your things. If you have a lot of um, excess things in rooms, extra furniture, minimize. I always recommend just keep a few pieces of furniture in each room and everything else you can put in the garage or you can put in a storage container. The other area to focus on is your kitchen. If you have all of these different things on your kitchen countertops, go ahead and start packing those up. Use cabinet storage, use pantry storage, because we really don't wanna see a lot of things on kitchen countertops, because then buyers think that there's not enough room or prep room when they walk into the kitchen. So tip number two, it's time to declutter. You're going to have to move it anyway, and a garage is a great place to stage your items until the day that you actually have to make your physical move. Tip number three, go ahead and have a home inspector come out and do a pre-inspection. The benefit of a pre-inspection is to allow you to understand the condition of your home. And lots of times we have things going on with our houses that we're really not aware of. So instead of being surprised when you're in your first two weeks of contract, go ahead and do that up front and pre-inspect. We're also seeing a lot of people not understand the results of home inspections and they get overwhelmed sometimes. So if you can have your house pre-inspected, it gives you an opportunity to correct things that are wrong and offer your home as a pre-inspected house, certainly free of any mechanical issues, that then a buyer has more confidence in buying. In addition to that, these home inspectors love to find all kinds of things to pick on when they come through houses. So when buyer agents or buyers request repairs, they also want licensed contractors, licensed plumbers, licensed electricians to cure these things. If you can do an inspection before you put your house on the market, some of these things a handy person or a great do-it-yourselfer can cure you know, let's say that you have a slow drain and it just needs to be snaked. The moment you call a plumber, you're talking about a $125 service call where you could go to a home center, get one of those things that you can use to snake your drain, pull all the stuff out of it, and for a matter of maybe a little $15 thing at Home Depot, uh, you cured your sink drain. So I definitely recommend as tip number three, get your house pre-inspected, 
take care of all your major mechanical issues, and then you can market your home as free of any mechanical issues, great condition, and ready to go for a buyer who just wants to move right in. My fourth tip is to declean and deodorize, especially if you have animals. Buyers really get turned off when they walk into a home and there is an overflowing litter box with strong odors, or they go into a backyard and they have to watch where they step because of the dogs. So take a little bit of time before you have people coming through your home, make sure to scoop out that litter box and clean up that backyard so there's no unpleasant experiences due to some of our four-legged friends or animals that are living in the home. In addition to that, there you may not have any animals, but you may have been in your house for years and the carpet might be stained or there may be odors in your carpeting. So it's a great time to have your carpets professionally steam cleaned and even do a deep cleaning where you just go room to room, get out that the, the bleach, the gloves, scrub your bathrooms or hire someone to come in and do a deep clean because unpleasant odors and um, environments and rooms can definitely be a turnoff if they're not positive when people are coming through and experiencing your home. In addition to that, you might want to change your filters for your heating and air system because sometimes odors can get trapped up in the ductwork. So if you freshen your filters and just think about making the, um, the sensory experience good as people come into your home, um, odors and visual drawbacks can be a reason why somebody chooses not to give you a great offer or even an offer at all. So I hope that you found my four tips helpful as you're thinking about putting your house on the market. Just a quick recap. Number one, understand the size of your house. And if you don't have a diagram, pay to have one done or speak with an agent if you're listing your home about getting measurements. Number two, have your house pre-inspected. Get a home inspector out, take care of the items that they find so you can market and sell your house as move-in condition with no mechanical issues. Number three, you definitely want to declutter simplify spaces and rooms to make them feel larger and easier for people to envision as their own. Number four, think about the experience that people have both from um, a sensory standpoint and a visual standpoint so that if you have animals, if you have strong odors in your house, um, you might be a smoker, uh, you might have a certain cooking style where you use a lot of spices. Just think about the sensory experience when people are coming through and do what you can to reduce or eradicate it. So as folks come through, that's something that doesn't create a reservation for them. So hopefully this video has been beneficial to you with my four top tips for preparing to put your house on the market. Again, my name is Jeanette Womble. I'm a local realtor in Columbia, South Carolina. If I can help you to prepare your home to sell, I'd be happy to stop by and give you a free consultation and share with you all of the wonderful things you can do to maximize your return on what might be your biggest asset in your life. You'll find my information at the end of the video. Please like and subscribe to my channel as every week I try to provide more information to help people to understand our area and make the best of everything that they have when it comes to our world of real estate. Have a great day and thanks so much for watching.